Today I want to share with you a nutrient-rich mushroom broth recipe. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, mushrooms are so rich in vitamins and minerals and I want to show you how to make this nutrient-rich mushroom broth using very simple mushrooms that are easy to find at your local grocery store. You don't have to search out any fancy or unusual mushrooms. Now two things I want to mention first is that if at any time you want to jump ahead, be sure to check the chapter timestamps that I'll have listed in the description underneath this video as well as in the pinned comment. And next, you don't have to write anything down. I'll have this recipe over on my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, and I'll have the link also in the description underneath this video as well as in the pinned comment. The good news is that the white button mushrooms that are very commonly sold at most grocery stores are actually very nutritious. Over the years with the introduction of so many fancy and exotic mushrooms at the grocery store, we've sort of been led to believe that these are the least nutritious, but that's not the case at all. They're actually very rich in vitamins and minerals, and specifically they're rich in potassium and selenium, and selenium is something that's often lacking in our diets. Now those are fresh white button mushrooms. What I've got here are some dried shiitake. These are completely optional. Now of all the exotic mushrooms out there, shiitakes are probably the easiest to find, either dried or fresh, but if you can't find them, don't worry about it at all. They are nutritious. However, I have very good news about another mushroom that's easy to find at the grocery store and has become quite common and is also very nutritious. And those mushrooms are the creminis, also what some grocery stores will label as baby bellas, because that's what they are. If these are allowed to grow up and become big, they're known as portabellas. But when they're small like this, they're referred to as baby bellas or sometimes cremini. Now I just want to read something to you from the New York Times about the nutritional profile of baby bellas or even portabellas. And I'll have all of this information in the blog post that corresponds with this video so you can learn more about the nutritional profile of all these mushrooms. But I just wanted to quickly share this with you that baby bellas or portabellas, uh, creminis, whatever you refer to them as, contain a high concentration of an antioxidant that it's got a very long name. I'll have that over on the blog post. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it, but it's abbreviated E-R-G-O. And all mushrooms contain a lot of nutrients, but those that are higher in this E-R-G-O, like uh, creminis or baby bellas, uh, are exceptionally good for our health. Now, we know that a lot of mushrooms, I talked about the white uh, button mushrooms containing potassium and selenium, and most mushrooms in general contain vitamin D, which is also something that's often lacking in our diet and that we need. But this ERGO is exceptionally interesting and something we should be consuming because in this article, which I'll link to, it talks about when we eat mushrooms that are high in this particular antioxidant, it can help potentially throat cancer and dementia. So obviously this, these mushrooms are something we really want to include in our diet and we especially want to focus on those that we can find and find easily at our grocery store, like the Bellas, that are high in this ERGO. So what we're going to need to make this mushroom broth, obviously, are the mushrooms, and I'm going to focus on using the baby Bellas and the white button mushrooms, 
And I'll throw in a few of the shiitake, but again, this is, that's completely optional. Both of these are very rich in vitamins and minerals, and as we've learned, these are exceptionally rich in, a, in that particular antioxidant that we want. So you're fine if this is all you can find at your grocery store. Then I like to include some aromatics. I've got some celery here, I've got some carrots. My carrots are peeled, that's only because I was using them for another recipe as well, uh, but you can totally leave them unpeeled. That's normally what I do whenever I'm using carrots in a broth. Then I've got two yellow onions. And again, if you have scraps, if you are in the habit of making a lot of bone broth and you have carrot scraps and celery scraps and onion scraps, you can definitely use those when making this mushroom broth. Then I'm gonna throw in some ginger. This is organic, so I'm just gonna slice it. I'm not gonna worry about peeling it. Uh, if it's not organic, you may wanna just give it a little peel. Uh, in terms of the onions, I'm gonna put them, I just wanted to mention to you, and especially if you're using your onion scraps, if you follow, I think it's the environmental working group that puts out the clean 15 and the dirty dozen list. Onions are usually in the clean 15, so don't worry whether they're organic or not, you can definitely use uh, the skins of the onion. And then I've just got a couple of bay leaves. I like the little bit of lemony flavor that they add to any broth. And then I've got some black peppercorns. Something else you could also add to this if you've got some uh, fresh turmeric, it kind of looks like ginger, but it's orange. Sometimes I'll see that at my grocery store. It's got wonderful anti-inflammatory properties, just like ginger and the taste is actually, at least I find it to be quite mild. And if that's something that interest, interests you, I have a, an anti-inflammatory bone broth recipe. And I also made it keto friendly for those of you who prefer not to use carrots and onions and things that may have natural sugars in them. And I'll be sure to link to that uh, in the description. If I remember, I'll put it in the iCard too. Now what I'm gonna talk about next is completely optional, but if you're not a vegetarian, I highly recommend that whenever you make like a mushroom broth or a mineral broth, something that doesn't have its basis in being a bone broth, you think about adding at least a few bones and preferably bones that are very high in cartilage because when that cartilage melts out into your broth, it creates gelatin. Uh, gelatin is cooked collagen and it's the cartilage that's very high in collagen. And the reason we wanna add collagen to any broth that we make and then drink is because collagen is very soothing to our digestive tract, but it also helps us absorb nutrients better. So having that gelatin in our mushroom broth is really going to help us absorb all the wonderful nutrients that the mushrooms have to offer. What I've got here are a bunch of chicken feet and they're very reasonable. Uh, I often see these at my grocery store and at Walmart, they usually run about $2. Even at the farmer's market, you can get a big bunch like this for around two to $3. They're very rich in cartilage, which then contains the collagen that's gonna melt down and become the gelatin. And chicken feet, I have found, are still one of the most reasonable cartilage rich bones available because even though they are very rich in cartilage and people know that that's going to make a collagen rich, ultimately gelatin rich bone broth, they're still uncomfortable working with them. So they're, still, they're one of the, the bones that are still reasonably priced. And I even share a bone broth recipe with you, a chicken bone broth recipe with you where I use chicken feet and I make a big batch of really gelatin rich bone broth for under two dollars. I'll be sure to link to that one too for you. So if you're comfortable working with chicken feet, I highly recommend you get a bunch and throw them into this mushroom broth. Now, if you're not comfortable work, working with chicken feet, I understand completely. You can use chicken necks that are still relatively affordable. You can use chicken backs that are still relatively affordable. Or if you're making a recipe where you're uh, cooking up some wings, chicken wings, just t uh, cut off the little tip of the wing and save those. They're very high in cartilage and will make a very gelatin rich bone broth. So start saving those up if you're in the, if you're in the habit of cooking up wings. 
And if you've got a chicken carcass, you can certainly throw that in. Or if you've got some chicken legs, you can throw those in. So you have some options. And if you have a few beef bones, you can go ahead and throw those in. Preferably ones that are rich in, in cartilage or high in cartilage and rich in, in collagen, uh, like a patella or a knuckle bone. You can just throw one in. That'll work beautifully. But even if you wanna leave this part out, don't worry about it. This is still a very nutrient rich broth and will be very beneficial uh, to drink this on a relatively regular basis. That'll be very good for your health. Now, even though we're gonna use all of this to make a broth that we're going to strain, none of this is gonna to go to waste because what you're gonna do is when you have all, everything that's left over from making the broth, the chicken feet or whatever chicken you use, you can just give that a rinse, wrap it well, put it in your fridge, and use it a second time around to make a chicken bone broth or whatever you're making. With the various mushrooms and the vegetables, the various aromatics, we're going to puree all of that and make a delightful cream of mushroom soup. So we're going to make use of everything. Nothing's going to waste. The only other two ingredients that you're going to need is some type of fat. I like to use ghee. Uh, basically, ghee is a clarified butter uh, and the milk solids are just left to brown a little bit. And that's what gives it kind of a little bit of a toasted flavor that's quite lovely versus clarified butter. Uh, where the milk solids are removed right away. So it has a more uh, simple or plain taste. But I really like ghee and this is very easy. You can make this homemade. My friend Jackie over at Little Country Cabin has a wonderful video where she goes into a lot of detail. Now, if you are using some chicken parts or beef bones, whatever you're using, then you're going to need some type of acid. And the reason you're going to need this is because, or an, an acidic liquid, the reason is you're going to need this is that it's going to help extract as much uh, collagen from the cartilage as possible. Now what I've got here is a half a cup of white vermouth. If you don't like using liquor, it, vermouth is a fortified wine, and if you don't like using liquor, I understand completely, uh, you can use a little vinegar instead. But don't go with a full half a cup because that'll give a little bit of a strong flavor to your broth, probably no more than a quarter of a cup. Or if you want, you could even use a tablespoon or two of lemon juice. But whenever you start using things like vinegar or lemon juice, you really have to pull back on the quantity because the flavor doesn't evaporate in the same way that the flavor of alcohol evaporates. The white vermouth, will, while it's simmering with the broth, the alcohol will begin to evaporate and it'll leave a very mild, almost slightly sweet flavor behind. Whereas vinegar and any type of citrus juice will leave more of a tangy, <laughs> for lack of a better word, a more tangy uh, flavor in your broth. So you really want to pull back on that, but you want to have some acid. You want your water to be somewhat acidulated so that it can help the process of pulling the, col uh, the collagen out of that uh, or out of those high cartilage bones. Now, one other ingredient I want to mention to you, which this is completely optional, but to further boost the minerals that are going to be in your mushroom broth, you can go ahead and add in a little bit of seaweed. What I've got here is dulce. I like the flavor of this. I find it leans a little on the sweet side, uh, but you could also use some kelp flakes. You could use a strip of kombu, K-O-M-B-U, I believe it's spelt. Uh, really anything, or you can completely leave it out. But whenever I make these type of broths that are based on some type of vegetables, or in this case, primarily mushrooms, I like to boost the mineral content as much as possible because I really like to make these nutrient-rich mineral broths, not just a nutrient-rich mushroom broth, but a nutrient-rich mineral mushroom broth. So if you find these at your local grocery store, uh, I also, again, I usually see them in the Asian section. Uh, sometimes they're also sold in the produce area. 
but any type of seaweed, if it agrees with you and you like it, feel free to throw in a little bit of a handful. What I've got here is just a half sheet baking pan. If you have a roasting pan, whatever you have is fine. What I'm going to do is roast the vegetables and roast the chicken feet and roast the fresh mushrooms. This step also is optional, but I do find that if you roast everything, it provides a richness of flavor to the final mushroom broth. So I'm just gonna slice everything up and go ahead and start getting this onto my baking sheet. I'm gonna slice the carrots, and then we're gonna do the onions, and I'm gonna leave the skins right on them. And this is just a rough chop, nothing fancy. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up these onions and get all of that onto my baking sheet as well. Saving all those skins, definitely. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of my mushrooms down onto my baking sheet. Now, this is just one pound of white button mushrooms. I'm, and what I've got here are two pounds of the baby bellas since they're exceptionally nutritious. Now it's gonna be crowded and you can definitely spread this out onto two roasting pans, but I have a small oven, so I'm just gonna have everything be very cozy and it's just gonna roast in the oven for a little bit just to get some browning on it. And so I'm not worried about uh, things being a little crowded. So we'll go ahead now and we got our two pounds of the baby bellas. And you don't have to cut up anything. You can if you want, but it's not required. Everything's gonna simmer and become really soft uh, in, during the simmering time. And then everything's gonna be pureed. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and top everything with my chicken feet. Now, this is nice because as this bakes, the uh, fat, any fat that is on the skin of these chicken feet will melt down and help with the roasting process of all of the veggies. Gave my hands a quick wash since I had been touching those raw chicken feet. Now what I'm gonna do is get some ghee, maybe about a tablespoon. It's not an exact science, so you don't need to worry. And I'm just gonna top all of these chicken feet and veggies with this. This will also help with the roasting process. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this into my 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven for about 30 minutes to bake. And all we're looking for is some gentle uh, golden color, some gentle browning, that's it. Well, I let all this roast for about 30 minutes and it looks glorious. This is exactly what you're looking for. Just some color on the chicken feed, a little uh, browning of the vegetables. Now, all we're gonna do is start transferring all of this to a large stock pot. What I've got here, I think this is a 10 quart. Now, I wanted to mention that you can add garlic to this if you want. I prefer not to add garlic because whenever I simmer something for a long time, and we're gonna be simmering this for six hours, I find that the garlic can develop a little bit of an off flavor, which then is imparted into whatever broth I'm making. So experiment with it, you know, to see if you really, I do really like garlic, but I just don't like it when it's simmered for a long time uh, in broth. So that's something to keep in mind. You can certainly, as I said, experiment with it if uh, you think that you might like it. Now what I'm gonna do is, as you see, there's been a lot of this liquid that's been released uh, from the mushrooms. It's nice and brown and any of the a uh, little bit of fat maybe from the ghee and the skin. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this right into my stock pot. Now to my stock pot, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my bay leaves and the peppercorns and the ginger, which I've sliced up and the rest of that dulse, or that's all the dulse, it's just one tablespoon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my white vermouth. If you're using vinegar or uh, lemon juice, you can go ahead and add that in now. Again, if you're not using any bones or chicken feet or necks, anything like that, you can leave that out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just finish this off with my dry shiitake. Now what I'm gonna do is put enough water in here 
to cover, to cover everything that's in my stock pot, and then maybe an additional two inches above uh, all of the mushrooms and vegetables and so on and so forth. I've filled this with water, and don't worry if the mushrooms float, just estimate what you think is about two inches uh, above everything that's in your stock pot. I usually just push it down with my hand, and then I can get a feel for the fact that I look like I've got about two inches extra of liquid. Now I'm going to bring this over to my stovetop. I'm going to bring it up to a boil. The minute it comes up to a boil, I'm going to turn it down to the lowest setting and just let it simmer on low, uncovered, or you can actually just sort of tilt the lid like this if you want. And I'm going to let it simmer on low for six hours. Well, this mushroom broth has been simmering for six hours. So now I'm going to strain out all the solids. Now these chicken feet still have a lot of life left in them. So I'm going to fish them out, wrap them up well, stick them in my refrigerator, and use them to make chicken bone broth tomorrow. Then what I'm going to do is just find the bay leaves and get those out. And then with the rest of these mushrooms and vegetables, I'm going to go ahead and puree them in a blender, you can do it in batches probably, and I'm going to use some of my mushroom broth as well as some cream to make a beautiful cream of mushroom soup. Now, that said, you could also let these cool a little bit, this one's jumping around in here, and slice them up, toss them with butter, and serve them as a side dish. Now, the nutrition is not as high as if they were just cooked quickly in a saute, say, with butter. However, they do, they do still contain some nutrition, and they're also high in fiber. So you definitely have options with everything that's in here. Uh, but I think a cream of mushroom soup is just going to be scrumptious. It's one of our favorites this time of year. Next, what I've got here is a half gallon size jar, and I also have a funnel that fits over this beautifully. And then I have a strainer that fits over my funnel. Now, if you've ever seen any of my bone broth videos, which I'll be sure to link to if that's something that interests you, I usually have a slightly different process where I'll line a strainer or a colander with a flour sack towel to really catch a lot of the bits and bobs of debris that I'm not able to scoop out with my spider strainer here. I don't find that to be necessary whenever I do like a mushroom broth or a vegetable mineral broth, whatever the case may be. Uh, this is a very tight, fine mesh strainer, and it'll catch little bits and bobs. But even if they were to be in the mushroom broth, they're basically just going to be little pieces of vegetable. So I'm not going to worry about it. So now I'm just going to do this very carefully. You could certainly use a ladle. But I think this will go smoothly. Now there's a tiny little bit of fat on the top here. That's from some of the ghee and maybe some of the fat that was released from the chicken feet. But I'm not going to worry about that. It actually gives a little bit of a seal uh, to keeping my mushroom broth fresh. Uh, but if you've seen my chicken bone broth videos and my beef bone broth videos, you know I like to use uh, the fat separator and separate the fat from the broth. And the reason that I do that is we use the broth up very quickly and then I save the fat for using in other ways, mostly just cooking, sauteing, whatever, whatever I, in any type of recipe that calls for some type of fat. But with the mushroom broth, I'm not going to worry about it. That little bit of fat, you know, it all has nutrition and it'll also help to insulate this a little bit and keep it fresh. And you can certainly do that with chicken bone broth and beef bone broth. I've done that before too. If I think that I may not use up my chicken or beef bone broth right away and I'm not freezing it, that's something else that I also do. But if I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and it has a nice fat cap, as I call it, on top of either the chicken fat, the schmaltz, uh, or the tallow, that's the beef fat, then I, I say, okay, that's all right. I'm going to leave that on uh, because that way it'll probably, the bone broth will probably stay fresh a week longer than it would without the fat cap. Now the mushroom broth that's in here, this is what I'm actually going to use to make the cream of mushroom soup, but I'm going to go ahead and decant it anyways because I want to show you how much uh, mushroom broth we were able to get out of what we made. Well this is fantastic because we basically got about a gallon 
of mushroom broth because each of these jars is a half gallon. So you can't go wrong with that. Well, I wanna give this a little taste to see how it is. Now, we didn't add any salt to this because whenever I make a broth, I don't like to add salt. I like it to leave it nice and flexible so I can put salt in depending on how I'm using it. Mmm. Oh, that is so rich. That doesn't even need any salt. That is a wonderful broth. It's going to be fantastic for using to make the cream of mushroom soup. But if you went and left the chicken feet out of this, this would be a wonderful base to use for making vegetarian soups as well as bean soups because the taste is so rich, so meaty, that you would never miss a ham hock or a, a, any kind of bone like that that you might put in a bean soup. You're going to love this. Now, if you'd like to learn how to make more mineral-rich broths like this, nutrient-rich broths like this, be sure to click on this playlist over here where I have a whole bunch of videos, not only for making bone broths, but also making nutrient-rich vegetable broths and mineral broths. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.